Hi guys, I'm Bobsy and this is a highly requested video to make a tutorial on broadcasts using Fishnet. So first of all, what's a broadcast? Well, a broadcast allows you to send messages to one or more objects without requiring them to be a network object. Let's say an example of this would be you have a grand hall that's full of lights and you'd switch a light switch and you want to turn on all the lights. Instead of having all the lights be network components, we can use broadcasts to tell all the clients that, hey, we're interacting with every one of these lights. So now that we know what a broadcast is, let me just talk about why I'm making this video. So first of all, as I mentioned, it's requested in both comments and in my Discord, link in the description. And the Fishnet documentation for broadcasts isn't great. I would still recommend you go look at the documentation, but to be honest, it's a bit convoluted. Uh, not necessarily convoluted, but it's just, uh, it's, it's a bit difficult to, to follow because they didn't really use a simple example. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to manipulate this cube. So in my scene, I just have this cube. And what I have made is I've made three positions. So if you look at the position in I have a position out here and a position to the left. And what I want to do is that when we press a button, either us or a client, either the server or the client presses a button, it should move between these positions. So let's look at how we do this. I've already made a cube position broadcast script. So let's just, it's just an empty script. Let's just open this. Now, first of all, there's some things we need to use. We need to be using fishnet.broadcast because, well, that's how we broadcast. We need to be using uh, just fishnet. Uh, because we need to use the instance finder and we need to be using fishnet.connection. Now, one thing I want to mention that's really important, keep in mind that we're not making the script into a network behavior script, which means we're not actually interacting over the network. This in turn also means that our cube that we're actually going to move over the network does not have a network object component. So now instead of using void start, I'd, it's always just good to be using on enable and on disable. Now I'll get into this a bit Later. One thing we also want to do is we want to have an update loop, which is why we're going to interact. So I'm just going to do an if input dot get down, and then I'm just going to do key code dot f as an example. All right. So now we're going to do something when we press an f. First of all, let's look a bit on the broadcast setup. So first, we actually need to set up a struct. So a struct is basically just something that allows you to hold data. And in this case, we're actually sending a struct over the network. So we're sending data. So since all the players are already going to know all the positions, I'd rather actually move through an index. So let's make a new list. I'm going to make a public list of transforms that we're just going to call cube positions. And this is just going to be a new list. Now I'm also going to have a public integer, which is going to be called our transform index. So now we can pretty much say that the uh, transform dot position of our cube should always be equal to cube positions at the transform index dot position. So this just means every frame. Now this obviously isn't a very optimal way of doing it, but this is I'm not this is not really what I'm guiding you on, so I'm just doing it the, the lazy way. So let's build our struct. So we're gonna make a public struct which is going to be called we're going to call the position index. And what's really important, we need to make it an I broadcast. And now all this struct really needs to hold is it needs to hold a public integer, which is going to be our transform index. So I'm just going to call it T index in this case. Now we have the struct and this is basically what we're going to send over the network. So for now, we haven't done anything. Keep in mind that even though this might already seem confusing, we haven't really done anything. All we set up is a struct that we can send over the network. Now we need to set up uh, functions that are being called when we receive a broadcast. I'm going to do on position broadcast and this is going to take in the position index i'm just going to call this the index struct and now this means that when this is being called we've actually just been sent this uh, information we've already been sent data so what we want is we want our transform index to change to be equals to the index struct oh sorry index struct dot t index so now let's set it up so that when we receive a broadcast they will actually run this function now two okay. case so in our case we want to use Instance finder dot client manager dot register broadcast, and then we here input the type, which is the position index, which is the struct we've made, and what fun function it's going to run, which is going to be our uh, on position broadcast. Now we can just hit this, and then in the on disable, we just want to unregister it. That's basically what we're doing. We can just write unregister instead, like so. So this basically means that when we're running a broadcast that's sending the that's sending the data form of position index, it should be running this uh, function. So what we can do in here now, and the reason why I'm saying in our case we're using client manager, that's because in our case we are the server. So we actually in here run a run a check to say instance finder that is server, and if we are the server, we want to run run type of broadcast, and if we are not the server, which means 
to search find that, but let's climb. We, run. we want to run another type of broadcast. So in the first case here, we actually want to do instance finder.server manager.broadcast. And then we just want to send in a new uh, position index struct. Like so, and then you can, if you don't know when you work with struct, you can actually just popula uh, populate it like this. Uh, so what we want to send through is we actually want to send our transform index plus one because we want to add one every time we press F. So I'm going to set the T index to be equals to our transform index plus one. And then we can just end this. Now, when we're at the server, this is going to work perfectly fine, but obviously when we're the client, it's not. But let's go test this anyway. First of all, I'm just going to populate the positions into here. And you can see our transform index is currently zero. So if I, when I open this, I start the server and I press F. You can see it now moved to this position. When I press F again, it's going to move to this position. And when I press F again, it's not going to do anything because we are out of range. So what I'm going to do instead is actually I'm going to go every time I press F, I'm just immediately going to calculate what our next position is. So next index is going to be equals to the transform index plus one. I can just do plus plus, but in my case, I'm just doing plus one. And then we're going to do if next index is greater than or equals to the acute positions dot count. We've got to set the next index equal to zero. And then in here we can just say the t index is equals to the next index. So for now if we go test it again, you should see that this should be working perfectly fine. When I press F, 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 we can see it's going to move the positions. And now before I build it and test it completely, let's just set it up for the client as well. So we're basically going to do the, the opposite thing of what we've done here. And um, so we've got to set up one that also, that acts a little bit different. So I'm going to do a private void, and I'm going to do on client position broadcast. And this is actually going to take in another parameter, which is the network connection, which I'm just going to call network connection. And it's still going to take in the position index structs that we made, which I'm just going to call index struct again. Now in this case, and this is actually really, really useful, um, this is something I saw in a video that was linked to me, I'm going to put it in the description, I don't remember the name of it, but this actually means you know exactly what connection has sent this to you, which can be really useful in some cases, we're not really going to use it in this case, but just so you know, this is the way that you get the connection that sends you the broadcast. So in this case, we're actually going to do instance finder.server manager dot broadcast, and we're just going to send through the index drop that we just got, and this should just work. And this should just work for all clients as well. So now it's going to send to all clients. And then if we go up here, we're going to do instance finder dot server manager dot register broadcast of the position index. And this is going to be on client position broadcast. Like so, and again, we're just going to unregister it again when it's on this thing. And then in here, we're going to do instance finder dot client manager dot broadcast. And then we're just going to broadcast the exact same thing actually. So, and there we go. This should now work. So now let me go build it and let's test it. So as you can see, I am now joined as the client over here and I've made the server over here. So when the client presses F, you can see they move on both screens. And if I go back to the host and press F, let's say twice, now it's on the left side. It's also on the left side here. So as you can see, now we're perfectly fine broadcasting this without the cube being a network object at all. We're still perfectly modifying it. I really hope this was at least somewhat useful to you. I know this can be a little bit confusing in the beginning, but it actually seems like a super useful tool. It's also new to me, so uh, this has been really interesting to learn. And I really just hope that you have a wonderful day.